Hey guys, Barn Geek here. In today's video, we're going to be installing these floor joists that we sawed in a previous video. These are cottonwood uh, floor joists, so this is kind of an experiment. Uh, right now, it's actually a couple of weeks after we installed these floor joists, and they're doing pretty good. They're not bending and twisting and warping like we thought they might, so I think we're going to keep making these, um, and they work really well. Uh, these are 4 inches by 6 inches. And they are um, out of cottonwood. If you have cottonwood logs, you know, this might be a good use for them. Um, we're spacing these at 24 inches on center because they're, you know, a little bit bigger, a little bit heftier uh, floor joist. So, you know, typically we do a, like a 2x6 or 2x8 floor joist that is 16 inches on center. That's what most of our plans uh, have in them. Uh, but you know, you can, by all means, uh, use 4x6s, 6x6s, 3x6s, uh, that type of thing for floor joists, and space them at various distances. Usually at 3x6, we space ours at 24 inches. Uh, we went 4x6 on these because they're cottonwood, and we're a little bit more unsure about the, the strength of them, so might as well make them a little bit bigger. Um, that's a lot of times what uh, farmers would do in timber framing when they built their barn. Uh, if they were unsure about the species at all, they would just make the timbers a little bit bigger. So we're going to put a single layer of uh, probably a mixture of cottonwood and ash and maple. It's just the stuff that we've got in the woods. Uh, and you'll see us cut that over time of the next few months. This project is going to be, you know, one that, one that, uh, that we're going to work on for quite a while. Probably a total of a year. Uh, before we get the whole thing done, um, this uh, <clears throat> this is going to be our kind of our farm shop where we work on tractors and store the tractors and you know maybe maybe have an animal in a bay once in a while and just just a general purpose farm building. Uh, you know maybe we'll pull a truck in here and change the engine once in a while. But uh, and there's going to be a wood shop upstairs too for the farm. So, all of it is farm use, so it doesn't require a building permit in Michigan. Uh, if you want to build a barn like this, we've got a bunch of plans in our barn plans library on our website, barngeek.com. Link for that in the description. And uh, go check it out. A lot of people have done it. We'll put up a couple pictures of uh, some of the projects that our customers have done over the years. We've got these, we've got the hardware on our website there too that you can order. Uh, if you become a member of our Barn Plans Library, you'll get the plans, you'll get the specifications on the hardware. If you've got your own sawmill, using these plans to build a barn is a really efficient way to use the resources that you have on your land. It adds a little bit of resilience and sustainability to your own uh, systems. Uh, if you can produce your own lumber to build with, just like a lot of you are producing your own food, your family is going to be more stable, your community is going to be more stable. So let's get to installing these floor joists. So cottonwood as a species is uh, very similar. It's related to uh, poplar or aspen. Uh, it's more of a soft, 
hardwood. It's considered a hardwood because it's uh, not coniferous. In other words, it doesn't bear cones um, like a pine tree would. Uh, it is, uh, so it's considered a hardwood because it's deciduous. In other words, it drops its leaves in the fall, and just like a maple or an oak does. But it is, it is a softer hardwood so it makes it a little bit easier to construct with. Uh, so poplar is very popple, popple. Poplar is very popular as a uh, uh, construction material uh, over many hundreds of years. When I used to tear down barns for a living, I found a lot of poplar boards and beams. They, they just used it for all t sorts of things. Cottonwood too, because once you get cottonwood dry, it looks a lot like poplar, so it's, it's hard to tell. Uh, you know, if somebody used cottonwood or if they used poplar. A lot of times, the way you could tell is you just take a saw and cut the end of it, and you'll smell cottonwood it has kind of a kind of a swampy smell to it. Um, some people say it smells like wet dogs or cats or something, but uh, it, it's not a very pleasant smell, and that's because a lot of times it grows uh, in places that have stagnant water. And so it, when it pulls up that water, it pulls in that, that um, smell, that fragrance as well. So, uh, and cottonwood is really good at soaking up water. Uh, they say a mature cottonwood will, will, will um, take up a thousand gallons of water a day. And so that's an extremely high amount of water. And, uh, and so when you cut a cottonwood down, a lot of times uh, if it's, during the spring or even in the summer um, your leg will get wet because the sawdust spraying your leg is, is just saturated with water and that's what makes it kind of unstable so if you cut it into one buys right after you cut it down and then you um, don't sticker it you just kind of throw it on the ground it'll turn into a banana which is what you see right here this is a board these other boards the two boards there or the three first boards there you can see they were screwed down and that one was not and it and it curled up like a uh, well like a banana look looks like a big boat if you can see that there it it's it does it looks like a it looks like a boat so with cottonwood at least if you turn it into one by you definitely got have to uh, either install it right away or uh, do something to you know sticker it up uh, really well and weigh it down so that it doesn't lift up on you it'll even do this as soon as it comes off as soon as you start sawing the the log into boards uh, the the end of the, the board that you're currently sawing will lift up um, significantly and then uh, you know it'll start to banana right away. So you you really gotta get it stickered, and or installed in a situation like this, screwed down so that it doesn't doesn't do that on you. This board is pretty much, you know, it's just gonna be thrown away. The reason it didn't get screwed down is because it had already actually bananaed to the point where I could not physically push it down. I'd flipped it over. And I pushed, tried to push the center down enough to get the screw in uh, to hold it down. And it was so, there was so much tension on it there that even driving the screw in, it just popped the screw back up and, and came out. So there was no save in this board. Um, I think we had sawed it the night before. The next day I tried to install it. It was already too late. So if you're using cottonwood, cottonwood for a one-by type situation, 
uh, you definitely need to either sticker it right away uh, in your stack or install it like this right away. So, But on the other hand, cottonwood is very strong. Once it's dry and stable, it is extremely strong. So using it for a floor joist or a beam like this uh, can be really uh, good. It, a lot of times when I was logging, we would use cottonwoods to uh, to lay down across the creek uh, so that we could drive the skitter across, basically building ourselves a log bridge uh, to go across the creek. And they're very strong for that. They, they last the entire job. And we'd, we would skid across the creek. We would skid, oh, I don't know, hundreds of logs across that cottonwood bridge. And it, and it was incredibly strong stuff. I mean, the, the skitter weighed probably... 15,000 pounds plus you know the log and everything else that, that came across that bridge uh, a lot of times are used for crane mats so if you you have a crane you know one of the big cranes with the big tracks on them uh, usually they'll have a big log mat or a beam mat that they bolt together uh, and they'll put those underneath those tracks to keep uh, to keep the the machine from sinking in the mud um, so they're you know, they're, they're very durable and strong, cottonwood is. So if we can use it for, for our barn projects, uh, it's going to be a, a good material for that. And, and it's fairly inexpensive because, you know, loggers don't seek it out. You know, commercial sawmills don't seek after it very often because it doesn't make great pallet wood because of this situation here. Um, where poplar is popple. Do you say poplar or popple or aspen? I, I I know some people call it aspen, but the species a little is a little different. But anyway, where with poplar, poplar or aspen or whatever you call it, uh, it won't it won't tend to do this so quickly because it's you know it doesn't doesn't drink as much water as, as a cottonwood. It doesn't contain as, doesn't hold as much water as cottonwood does, so. But like I said, uh, if this cottonwood works out well, it's gonna be a huge advantage for us because we have a lot of it. We have a lot of cottonwood in, on our property. Uh, there's, and there's a lot of, co cottonwood is a very common um, timber that grows really big and fast. So uh, if we can use it to our advantage, you know, it's gonna really, it's going to be a really useful uh, timber for building with. So that's why we're doing the experiment. And so we'll keep you posted on that as time, as this, this build progresses. And I believe in it enough to take the chance to use it in my, my barn shop. So, so I am pretty confident it's going to work pretty well. So anyway. Subscribe to the channel so that you can see how the progress grow, goes with this barn. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.